All right. Um, this is a syllabus. I know you already uh, looked at this, but I'm going to I'm going to point out something that you guys need to make sure. This class, as it says, we're going to cover two things, security issues and, and intelligence issues, uh, both in coding uh, spectrums. So coding is a very, very important. Uh, unlikely, many of our students think cybersecurity is not does not require codings. Uh, it, it may not require codings, but if you think, uh, for example, business, they also uh, do codings. Uh, arts, they also do codings. Coding is everywhere. Okay, medicals, yeah, particularly uh, medical employees, uh, they eager to learn something about the codings. Um, so if we make something uh, programmable, then then your life will be much easier because it can run automatically. And also, uh, your system, if you want to make it secured, then it can be secured, it can be maintained, it can protect uh, from any illegal uh, unauthorized access or intrusions or tax uh, automatically. And also if you could do, uh, if it is not right now, but in the near future, uh, if things going on uh, machine learning or more intelligently or learn, learning by itself, then uh, your system will be uh, much, much more intelligent, not only secured, but also intelligent. So two things need to be discussed in this class. As I uh, said here, uh, learning outcomes. Um, <clears throat> as you do code, how you think you can make your code with no security holes. Where there is a security holes, then attackers can uh, penetrate through that security holes. That is uh, normal cases. So we'll look at uh, not only uh, the cyber threats, not only analyze the vulnerabilities of our systems first, but also we will look at how we can make some code that may attack others. Okay, not only defense, but also offense. So defense, defensive and offensive, uh, yeah, offensive both uh, will be discussed. Um, meeting during this time, but as I said, we're going to push one hour later, so 2.52 somewhere here, depending upon the course materials, depending upon your response, okay? So we'll look at, we'll try to meet uh, synchronously most of our time. But um, if, for example, if we have weather issues, well, weather issue may overcome, the right? Because we are going to meet in Zoom. Um, some other times, rather than uh, giving you a one-time lecture from me, but uh, not only uh, one screens, you can see only one screen, but if you want to see multiple different screens, because we do not have uh, extra cameras or we have we don't have a production um, uh, um, other staff members to shoot 
my lecture. Uh, if we have then difficulties, then I can uh, record something in advance and put that on Blackboard. So you can check out during that week. Textbooks. Um, some years ago, uh, 2022, I wrote uh, one book, Secure Coding uh, Python. This book doesn't include intelligence yet, but I am going to do in, uh, intelligence coding, intelligent coding also. This is not required, but if you want to see the coding list, uh, this contains a lot of uh, codings available. This is all uh, Blackboard based, this lecture. There are some labs, coding labs. Um, because this is a coding, right? Uh, intelligent and secure and intelligent programming. I am going to use a cloud server so that you can join the cloud server. We can work together. I know you guys already know the Python. Python is a major language that we are going to use in this class. I have a question. Um, for the Python, um, you can always download that off of the uh, Microsoft website, right? Py or, you're talking about Python or IDE? I'm you're talking, talking about, about Python. Integrated editing environment, uh, development environment, or Py Python is Python is not Microsoft products. Python. Is no, I'm saying I'm saying I'm sorry, I got confused. I'm saying the the the, the ID the ID the ID one. Okay, that ID. One. Good question. Uh, there are lots of uh, different uh, products uh, for IDE. Uh, you can use Microsoft to Visual Studio if you. If you want, is this something uh -huh. that you are talking about, Nick? Yes, this was yeah, this is exactly what I was talking. I'm sorry, I I worded it wrong in the second. Right, sorry. that's fine. Uh, yeah, you can use uh, Microsoft Visual uh, Studio if you if you are familiar with it. Uh, but there are other uh, many other like Jupiter's uh, or uh, when I teach uh, Python and uh, in another language, another uh, uh, the courses. I I'm, I like. Uh, Another simple ID is called the PYZO, uh, P Y Z O Z O. I'm going to show it to you a little bit later. Uh, okay. But in this class, I am uh, going to use uh, Google Colab. Have ah, you heard okay. of the Google cool. Colab? Okay. I know what that is, yes. We right. used we'll, it in the other class, yes, that I had, yes. I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use a Google Colab, uh, which is very, very convenient. And you can learn a lot. I, it is more like a lot of editing uh, uh, from me, uh, but you can learn uh, that uh, uh, from uh, Google Lab. Let me bring that something here if you, okay. Okay, thank you for answering my question. No problem. Uh, with respect to that, for example, uh, this is this is something that I prepared for uh, uh, Google Colab. So lab one, software vulnerabilities and goal of the software and, and some of the uh, things and some of the motivation, if you jump to that motivations, uh, some of those. So uh, this is a code, code so that you can click this to run it, see how it works. Uh, and see how we can see how how to see uh, the sort of the list. So you may think of uh, this way or that way or that way. Some of these good, some of these are not good. Uh, 
not good means uh, that is not correct, then, uh, then how, for example, in this case, this is only, only that you can see uh, the result of this. Okay, this is what I made. In this case, you can see the result. They are all sorted. But if you click this, none. It looks okay, right? This is a sortings. But if you do this way, you don't get any. Something like that. This is, this is a collab uh, that we are going to use uh, in this class. This requires a lot of uh, work. Uh, from my side, because everything needs to be prepared, uh, you come here and and follow that. Also, I'll give you the homework assignments so that you can produce something like this. Uh, it's a good, it's, it is cloud-based uh, uh, learning systems. That's what I want you to learn. Okay. That's what we are going to do. So IDE, if you are familiar with any IDE, then that's fine, you can use it. But altogether, I try to work on uh, Google Collab. And the submission, if it is homework assignments, then I want you to submit it Python code only. Okay, Python code only in one uh, file. It's not a good idea for you to uh, copy and paste into uh, the homework uh, Dropbox, which is, which is not a file. And also, many times, if you copy and paste the code itself, then uh, indentation may be uh, uh, the broken, therefore it is not uh, Python, it is not uh, valid Python statements. Uh, of course, in that way, I cannot grade it. If it is not evaluated properly, you, you won't get uh, any credits because I am going to grade only thing that you submit, okay? So be careful. When you submit, you need to sub you need to follow the way uh, it is submitted. Participation. Uh, this is something that I uh, we need to uh, practice. Um, if you open up chat box, and I am going to give you. There's a link, Google link. Can you guys see the Google link? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to try to log in. Probably it uh, needs uh, access permission from me. Then you need to click the request of uh, the access so that I can uh, invite you guys. So first, first thing from Eric. So I can share with Eric. If you see that, then please take a look at right now. Okay, David. Eric, can you see what you can see from that uh, attendance list? What do you say, Professor? Can you explain that, the way that you understand? I want I to see if uh, it is uh, clear uh, to understand uh, it. I haven't opened it yet. Oh, OK. Or anybody, if it's you are already to, shared? It's going to say allow access. Do we allow access? You need to request it to me so that I will. OK. Uh, Messing. This is Gmail, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever that you can see from there. 
And we are going to give us, sorry, um, you said you were going to give an email to us? I think if you try to open it, then it shows you some of the button, whether you, oh, Nick. Yeah, I, I got your request. So I'm going to okay. allow you to in. Nick, can oh. you see the table there right Let now? Let me try reopening the link one moment. You don't get it yet, okay. I have yeah, sir. Yes, I have access, yeah. Okay. So that is an attendance list. Um, I mean, four columns. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, David, Dean, Eric, and Nicholas. Yeah, the way that you do, that's fine. Time to check in. I want you to put the time, time right now, whatever that is. Um, the, usually, this third column, time to check in, uh, that I want to use it. If I ask you to work this uh, asynchronous, then I want to see when you look at uh, this course materials. Like this time today, uh, we're all together at this time. Not really uh, important right now, but, uh, but usually I'm going to give you uh, four columns uh, some of the times. Uh, the time that you want to look at, that is very important for me to see when you are coming to read uh, the course materials. We have five, five students. Do I have five students only at this time? Oh, Lucas, you are coming in. Great. So every so every time we log in uh, into the Zoom meeting, we're going to have to click this link. When I ask you, when I ask okay. you to, right. Okay, thank you. If you. you do not see that address, you don't need to do. Okay. Right. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, everyone did that right now. So we have uh, four more students to come. Some students are uh ac currents but that's fine there's a participation okay um today i th i think one student who wants to come in but uh he tried to come in uh, at 250 i don't know why that student didn't look at the, uh, the course announcement before uh, joining the class. Okay, assignment. We have a lots of assignments in this class, but there is no uh, the project. Um, many assignments and one exam. Okay, one exam. Exam will be uh, either online or or uh, in person, I would say. Online. In class or online exam. So okay. we will, we will uh, decide. But uh, the university encourages us to uh, do uh, in class exam for many reasons. Okay. If it is an online exam, then uh, at least one restrictions, one requirements. One requirement is that all students need to turn on their camera. Camera needs to shoot uh, the students, examinees, uh, so that I can proctor the students uh, over, over the Zoom. Uh, that is uh, the minimum way of proctor. But actually, uh, in class, that is uh, ideal. So we'll see. So I'm going to get the common uh, agreement among ourselves, students and me. 
evaluations, uh, one time exam, 40%, homework, 55%, and participation, 5%. That is uh, like that we practiced today. Okay. As I said, not all the time, but sometimes that I do. This is a great scale. All others um, just follow the university rules and policies. You can read that. Um, course schedule. So today is introduction. Next week, we'll look at the principles of so software functionalities, principles. So National Institute of Standard and Technology, NIST, uh, published the articles. So I picked up two articles among many. So we'll look at the principles of uh, secure uh, software development li life cycles. And also, uh, recently in software, uh, there is a new terminologies tossed out, which is called the software supply chains. I know you guys have heard of supply chains in many, uh, many times, but not in computer science, but in logistics, right? Uh, in the past few years, uh, we have experienced of sub some problems in supply chains, uh, particularly uh, from uh, that, uh, pandemic uh, cases, some of the viruses. Uh, so international uh, trading uh, has some issues, big issues, tragedies. Likely in software, there may be, or could be, if that happens, that will be uh, problems or sometimes a big problem or disasters. Supply chain in software technology is not like logistics issues, but similar. In software, there are developers. We have two big uh, players, developer and consumer, user, right? We have a user at one side. At another side, we have uh, developers. But these days, user and developers become one in many cases. In other words, operator is, is a user, and we have developer. Developer and operator, they can become one. We call that DevOps, right? DevOps. In between, we have a security engineers. So developer and security and operator. All together is called DevSecOp. DevSecOp. D-E-V-S-E-C-O-P-S, DevSecOps. That is, uh, there's a, there is a place that where you guys need to be in, right? Uh, as you graduate. Well, in, along the path of your career, in your life, I want you to be in all these three functionalities, developer, uh, security and operators. Don't restrict yourself as as an operator only. Operator, anyone can be an operator. Uh, security operator also, if someone develop some security operator program, then you can simply click and run it. Anyone can do that. I want you to have your own 
uh, top-notch technologies. If you know how to develop it, if you know how to operate it, then you will be the best person. That is, that is, a, that is your kingdom. I want you to build your own kingdom, which is to develop security and operators, operations. So, yeah, so software uh, supply chains, how we can make along, the, along that chain, chain in software, uh, software technology is from developer to operator or deployment. Developments is not only a standalone small system developments, but it is more like integrations. So integration and deployments. If we want to make integration and deployment continually, so that we have a continuous integration and continuous developments, continuous deployment. So there is a CD, CI, CD issues. CI slash CD issues. What that means is that there is a continuous integration and continuous developments. So we, we need to uh, look at that. Okay. That is a principle. Here, CI CD in software supply. Uh, so software uh, supply chains, SSC. I have some, hmm, what is this? Are you guys okay? I have some. A participant is able to close the question. Yeah, okay, I'm following along. Okay. We'll see. Okay. And then we'll look at the errors. Software has errors. Uh, if error occurs, if error is known, then then that is that is the one of the vulnerabilities. How we can handle that errors? In uh, when you develop it, in coding we call that exception handlings. So we'll look at uh, exception handlings. Using some exceptions built in or some exceptions. This is a user defined. This is a built in exceptions. This is a user defined exceptions. And then we'll do, do uh, reverse engineering. As you compile your Python code, so it could be executable. And then we'll, so we need to decompile it. Some other the weakness that we may think of, that is a file extensions. File extensions uh, tells us what that file is. So we, need, we want to understand how that file can be formed. So it could be sometimes PDF files, or sometimes that file itself is maybe MP4 or maybe PPT for PowerPoint slide, or it could be plain text. Uh, so we'll look at. So up to this. Half of this semester, we'll look at the, the security issues. And half of the other is a little shorter than half. Not, real, not really uh, half. So deep learning, four weeks only for intelligence. And then we'll come back to uh, security issues again. Steganographies. So deep learning, we'll look at um, motion learning and also neural network how we can make 
our code intelligent. And also steganographies. So far, the security issues till the week of 8th, uh, we'll look at how we can protect her, how we can keep our uh, system uh, secured. Steganography is a little different. How we can uh, transmit some of the secret text securely to someone else if we want to deliver, uh, for example, in image files. You can hide your text in image files. It is very hard to extract it. It is not, it is not really hard to hide the images. But if someone hide the image in a file, somebody who do not know what that person is do, it has been done, then it is almost impossible to extract uh, extract the image from, uh, I mean, extract the text from image files. There's a steganography. So we'll look at that. So a little bit of coding can do uh, the secure uh, data transmissions. If you want to transmit the text files uh, by sending the image files, for example, J JPEG files to someone else, then even if someone uh, intercept that image files, if that person uh, open it, then that is a simply image files, right? To our human eyes, almost impossible to see if that image may be manipulated. Almost impossible. How many colors can be represented in, in digital uh, images? Well, it is 65,000 colors, right? 65,000 colors. Let's say if it is a pink, then there are thousands of uh, different pinks available. So we're going to use that. If there is a black, then it is a one black? No, thousands different blacks. So to our eyes, if there's a pink and black, then there is just pink and black. We cannot tell. Even computers cannot tell. Unless we look at zeros and ones, the code, binary code itself. So we tweak the binary code from one to zero or zero to one. It's almost impossible to. But anyway, these are the, all the techniques that we are going to learn in this class. Anyone has any question about our syllabus? No, everything seems straightforward. Okay, great, thank you. Then we'll look at uh, another. Then I prepared for the first class, which is here, intro. Why secure codings? Uh, there's a secure uh, I mean cyber threats, cyber attacks. So cyber threats and cyber attacks are targeting countries. Some countries try to attack 
our countries. You know that, right? Which countries? Some countries, um, some, some team try to attack some other organizations. Or some individual try to attack your own digital asset. So how they can attack my digital asset if there's a system where there is my digital asset is located and if that system does not protect my digital asset then uh, it is vulnerable. System itself is nothing but coding effort. If it is not a physical uh, container then everything can be uh, can be available in cyber space. We can think of uh, some storage that is tightly protected, uh, door lock completely locked, and, and no one can get in. There is a physical uh, security. But these days, door lock itself is also connected to computer, to the internet. Therefore, there is no space physically secured. Unless if you do also cyber security uh, tightly connected to physical space. Some of you already had the experience when you check in hotels, then they may allow you to use your cell phone to unlock your hotel room. How come it is possible? Because a lock itself that is installed in hotel door. Lock itself is not simply mechanical lock. Lock has some computing power in it. And also it has communication uh, capabilities. Sometimes it can communicate to your cell phones using Bluetooth, Bluetooth connections. Many other cases, uh, Wi-Fi connections. You guys heard, you guys had that experience, right? If it is connected to Wi-Fi, guess what? You can, you, you also accept, you are connected to Wi-Fi. So that hotel door is not only uh, open to somebody designated, but technically it is also possible for you to access. Unless uh, it, is, it is completely protected. There is a, there is a digital asset. It's not only the hotel room. Entire city, entire country, university facilities, school facilities, hospital facilities, where there are door locks. Currently, door lock is the only, well, there's a first mechanism that we can divide uh, the spaces from unsecure space to secured space. You may 
consider school elementary school uh, gun firings gun violations so somebody jump in the school first thing how somebody can jump in inside the school that is a lock on lock issue once that stranger is in some spot in a school school hallways there are multiple doors available and classroom has doors how can we if it is unlocked at peace time how can we lock it up because it is a war time so that stranger cannot jump in a classrooms although he can come in the hallways there may be a lot of different scenarios available how can we isolate that gunman in a small spot in that space secure coding so what is what kind of coding series so coding on door locks simple things right door lock is a small physical devices but there is no isolated metal device only in these days. There is a uh, cyber, cyber physical devices are common. Cyber, cyber physical device. They are all connected. Okay. Digital assets are uh, produced, managed, value added, destroyed, uh, de destroyed, deployed. Sorry for that. It should be deployed and destroyed. So produced, managed, value added, deployed, and finally successfully securely destroyed by software. So how, how it can be done? Right? So, lots of uh, combinations available. How some digital assets can be deployed. It is deployed by credentials, or deployed by credits, or deployed by, I mean, value added by credits or managed by tradings. But anyway, this slide uh, tried to explain to you coding now needed uh, security concerns. So far, probably, when you learn codings, uh, if I see your uh, attendance list here as I ask you to answer uh, coding skills uh, many of you well half of you say medium half of you guys say low uh, hmm okay so So secure codings, um, up, up, up till this time, um, you are thinking of how how I how how can I make the software fun functioning? So I want to make uh, something functioning well. So functioning well, well functioning, that is uh, the first goal to you guys. It should work. So whether it works or not. 
if it is if it is functioning, then so far you get the full credits, right? When you learn uh, Python's. But that is not uh, the ending goals. The next goal is how you can improve your codings. Some of your codings, coding itself, language itself, maybe sloppy, maybe it's not concise, it's not uh, clear. Therefore, you can make it clear, make it simple. That is a way of improvement. But there is another way of improvements as well. Some codings takes two seconds to complete. Another codings maybe one second to complete. Fast processing, that is the improvement, many cases. So that's lots of different improvement is available. That is the second goal of your coding. Third goal is make it secure. Not only make sure that it's functioning, not only make sure it runs fast, but also your code needs to be secured so there is no vulnerabilities. No vulnerabilities. So make sure there is no vulnerabilities. I know there's no software which never have vulnerabilities. So if there is a software, always the vulnerabilities. So we need to reduce the vulnerabilities. Always, always uh, there is a new vulnerabilities because new technology is coming out. Okay, new skills is developed. Therefore, your legacy systems might have more vulnerabilities. So how you can, your system may be evolved as technology evolves. That is machine learning, right? Can react the new technologies. So machine learning is the fourth goal. So this course doesn't cover all of those completely well. It is impossible, right? But this course is the first course that you can think, hey, if there is a coding, then there's a four different goals available. So we achieve first goal, first time, functionality. Second goal, improvement. Third goal, security. Fourth goal, machine learning. Threats to digital assets. Uh, this slide shows some of the, the, uh, the threats, but a lot more than this. Malware, uh, critical malware is ransom, ransomware, right? So we can also make a ransomware very quickly. If you were two, three years ago, developing, right? For example, the Windows operating systems. Windows operating systems itself uh, prohibit uh, the encryption of your disk. Entire disk, you can try. I know you guys already uh, took some of the encryption techniques, right? Uh, I know you guys took already 385, then uh, you learned quite a few uh, encryption algorithms and hands-on exercises. So, so try to 
encrypt your entire disk. It's not available. It's not, it's not allowed because of that uh, ransomware attack. But anyway, but still you can um, encrypt, let's say, part of your disk. That is possible. Always possible. Encryption with uh, uh, some of the key. Key is held by you only, so no one else, the key. How can you encrypt remotely? That is something that you can learn. Okay. Uh, many times it can be done by uh, phishing. So if someone clicks some buttons, then the, the reaction or any actions in response to button clicks, that is uh, activation of uh, the one code, code uh, the activations of uh, executions of a code segment. In that code segment, you can include the encryption codings. Okay, so phishing, uh, man in the middle attack, denial of service, distributed denial of service. Denial of service can be uh, practiced uh, if you set up server and client uh, uh, programs. It can be done uh, very easily, right? You can set up a TCP server, you can set up TCP client, and then you can uh, produce millions of TCP clients and activate them all together uh, for heavy uh, uh, requ request. Then server may not handle that. Denial of service. That is possible. Cross scripting uh, attack. That is possible. Zero day uh, exploits and more and more. Lots of uh, threats uh, available. So uh, we're going to make some, not all, some of these in class. So threats are from vulnerable, vulnerabilities of software. So you can, we can, we can make our software uh, with the minimum vulnerabilities. At least uh, when, at the time we develop, then we need to make sure there is no vulnerabilities, right? We may not consider all 100% possible cases. Therefore, uh, vulnerabilities may be ignored or unidentified. But ideally, if we know, we can make sure. So threats are coming from vulnerab vulnerabilities. S threats are coming from unprotected web services. These days, almost of uh, the user request going through the web services. When you access banking systems, there is a web services. When you register your course, there is also web services. When you um, access uh, cloud servers, then that is a web services. Our Colab, Google Colab, that is also web services. Okay, so some web services are protected, but many are not are protected. So globally recognized developers 
as the first step toward more secure encodings. Uh, there's a, a OWASP top 10 threats, uh, always possible. So you can take a look at that. Let me see some of those. Um, best way that you can see, uh, we may see here top 10 top 10 uh, cyber threats. Some of them are from um, WASP. Oops. Oh, here. So WASP mobile top 10 So many different. Few days ago, what are the top ten vulnerabilities? Wasp. So a month ago, right? This is uh, new ones. This is a secure development, uh, software development, secure, sof secure software development lifecycle. So we have a SSDLC. What's a new top 10 list of This is always the issue, right? Cross site scriptings are removed. This is removed and merged into other categories. These are the new. Insecure design, software data integration failure. See here CI CD pipelines, as I mentioned, what is the CICD? Continuous integration and continuous deployments pipelines. This is like supply chains. What, sub, what kind of supply chains? Software supply chains. Server side request forgery. Access control is always the issue, right? Cryptographic failures, injection. We can pra practice injections in our softwares, not only SQL, but software itself, we can inject, right? Some of the malicious code can be injected into um, the trusted code. Um, other advanced techniques from this injection is steganographies. We can inject the text inside the images. We call that steganographies.
Server-side request forgery vulnerabilities occurs when a web application pulls data from remote resources based on user-specific URL without validating the URL. Even servers pro uh, protected by a firewall, VPN, or network access control list can be vulnerable to this attack. Server-side forgery, request forgery is, is very uh, more common uh, when it comes to cloud services. So cloud is a server. Server is running at the cloud side. Why we run, why we operate the cloud? Because we have lots of requests from so many known and unknown clients. Clients requests, clients submit the request. So we need to validate, we need to verify, we need to sanitize the request uh, for each different client to request. I know some of you guys uh, know, uh, I don't remember, what, was it Dean or Nick? But anyway, PHP uh, programming. In the PHP, PHP is, is a good tool that we can develop server-side uh, request analysis and request services. So in PHP, we need to uh, sanitize user's request. Other, otherwise, uh, user may uh, submit with the request, submit the request with the uh, malicious code, maybe a virus, may malice, some of the attackable uh, code segments. So, so that needs to be verified and validated. Um, let's say this is a, this is a software, okay? So we have some modules inside. Maybe this is a backlog, back door. Back door may be open to red team. Red team may attack. Inside these modules, the system, modules inside the system, there may be some uh, issues. It's not easy to identify if there is uh, some malicious code segment inside. If we can decompile this, if we can, we may be able to take a look at. Or 24-7, when this system is functioning, if there is a communication from outside, then, then you need to investigate the networks. <clears throat> Network packets needs to be investigated to see if it is communicating with uh, the trusted <coughs> URL to see if the payload has no malicious code in it. All those things need to be <coughs> investigated. <coughs> so deep investigation is needed. Then software development is required. 
So network vulnerabilities also needs to be considered. This is pictorially uh, explained, but um, in reality, all kinds of vulnerabilities takes place. <clears throat> How we can protect it? Secure SDLC framework. Uh, provides some guidelines. So if you click this, oh, page not found. That is unlinked. Then I can post it. I'll post this so that you may be able to see it, read it. Uh, <clears throat> this is a recent version, February 22. And next week, we'll look at this. So. For example, defining security requirements and uh, for software developments, uh, there may be multiple uh, tasks. So if it is for identification and, and documentation of all security requirements for the organizational organizations of software developments and infrastructure and processes, and main, maintain the requirements over the time. Then example for that is a define policies for securing software developments in infrastructures and define policies for securing software development process through the SDLC and review and update the security requirements and educate uh, the affected individuals and the references, some of the references there. So this is very, very useful documents. So we'll look at that. So that's for next week. And then uh, we'll look at the vulnerabilities the third week. As I uh, quick showed it to you uh, in Google Colab. So you can use the Colab to see the vulnerabilities in our codings. And the following weeks, because of there are errors, something expected, something uh, at real time occurring, then how we can handle that. Error handlings, exception handlings, okay? Those things are discussed. To do that, uh, if you have your own ID, uh, you can use it. But make sure that even if you, you can work on, on your own ID, your submissions, your submissions should be in plain text Python in a file. Okay? Do not submit any of the packages that is uh, compiled in any uh, a, 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 a proprietary uh, softwares. For example, uh, Microsoft uh, yeah, Visual uh, Studios do not submit Visual Studio uh, formats. I do not have a Visual Studios. Okay, I cannot evaluate it. I'm sorry to interrupt. Is this PowerPoint on uh, Blackboard as well? 
Yeah, it should be in uh, what PowerPoint? No, your plain text Python code. If I ask you to do, if I ask you to, hey, submit, design this in PowerPoint and submit PowerPoint slide, then you can, you can drop the PowerPoint slide. But if I ask you to do some codings in Python, then uh, Python codes in a file. So file extension should be .py. Clear? Clear. Yeah, it should be .py file, not .jupyter, not .dot uh, Visual Basic, not .dot uh, uh, IPY NB, which is a Google uh, uh, Colab notebook. But I want you to submit .dot .py. If you're working on ID Paizo, then Paizo file format is .py. So that's a clear if you do this way. Uh, Python interpreter currently 12, right? 3.12, not 10. So you can use uh, 12. Your settings. Um, doesn't matter, you can work on your own Windows operating system, so a Mac OS, fine. Some of you are working on Linux, fine. Okay. And some of you may work on native Python or Anaconda, but Everything is fine, but your final submission should be in .py files. For safety, if you do not know how to do, then you can use Paizo, okay? Paizo can generate .py files. So here's a note. The format of submission should be a plain text as a files. Okay. If you do not want to use any IDE, then you can simply edit in uh, Notepad or using VI, uh, VI editor on terminal. Those who may recognize what VI is, VI is really, really olden day editor uh, in 1980s or earlier. I don't think any, anyone uh, wants to use this uh, VI on terminals, but not, not pad. If you're working on IDE, then you don't have to worry about this. But if you do not want to do, but if you know operating system itself, then you can do on Windows. Uh, you may get the terminal by pressing Windows button uh, and all uh, button, then you will get the pop-up uh, window. There you need to type CMD or on Mac, command buttons and space. Then there is also a uh, text field. There, if you type terminal, then you can see also some of the terminals there. And then you can use for Windows guys, uh, Notepad, and then you can compile, you can, you can interpret uh, your Python code there. For Mac users, uh, do this way. As an example, for Mac users, if you do terminals, if you do not have this uh, terminal icon there, you simply do command and uh, space. Then there's a text field. There you need to do terminal. Yeah. Then there is a terminal this. So if you click this terminal, then you will get that also. Right? Here in the Terminal, you can do Python 
type Python, then you, you will get that Python code, right? Um, this Python is uh, 3.9, the version a little behind, but that's fine for this class. Okay, there you can do something like help. And quit, quit. Uh, that's terminal based. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to Paizo, if you, well, if I, in, during this class, for example, two weeks from today, then, then we will go, go this, collab, uh, collab.research.google.com. Okay. So if I click this, then that is the collab. I have already some of the collab code, but if you do not of those, then you can click new uh, notebook. So new, this untitled the extension is IPY uh, NB. So there's a drill down. Uh, the menus. You can also bring some of the external files here if you like. And this is the codings that you can do. This is a Python codings. So you have uh, uh, CPU, GPU, and TPU available. And then RAM size may be uh, given to you. Uh, yeah, that's what we are going to do. Any questions? So in class, we, most cases, we are going to use CoLab. Homeworks, you can use CoLab, but uh, you need to convert that to uh, .py file only if you want to submit it. Oh, this is not, it's, it's not for homeworks. Is it something? Oh, this is homeworks, right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, choose the platform to set up the following Python ID. No. Um, is it posted? No. Yeah, this is not homeworks. If it is, if it is attached to your, wait a minute, slide, ignore that. Let me check if that's included. No, that is not included. The one on Blackboard only has 10 slides. Right, it does not have it. I just checked. Yeah, you Doesn't do not have, have this. Fine. Yeah, your Blackboard has up to this. Yeah. Save. All right. I think I covered everything that I prepared for the first class in this semester. Any questions? Anybody no, had any, has any issues? Any questions? Nick? No, thank you. I cannot hear you. No? Okay. If there is no question, uh, this Can you is hear it. me now? Oh, okay. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, no, no, no. I said that I don't have any questions. Oh, Thank okay. You. 
All right. Yeah. This is it for tonight. Uh, I'll see you next week. Again, uh, our Zoom will start at 3.50. So I'll see you next week. Have a good evening. Have a Thank good you very much. Have a good evening.